Greetings of peace. Welcome to the Dean Show. I'm Eddie, your host. You're watching the Dean Show every week. New show. Exciting, exciting. And you're tuning in. And you went from maybe being obsessed with a boyfriend. Then you learned about the Dean, this way of life. That's a complete way of life. And now you left off being obsessed with a boyfriend and doing it the wrong way to doing it the right way. Now you're obsessed with getting a husband, getting a wife. And now you're in the strife now. It's very difficult. You're seeing that it's, it's, it's tough. It's challenging. You went through all the matrimonial sites. And you've been paired up with the wrong person. You're just not clicking. And my next guest went through all of the same drama. And he went from this site to that site to that person to that person. Finally, he made it. And he's gained so much experience. So if you are just about to give up and you tuned into the Dean Show, there's hope yet. Because with my next guest, he's going to help us benefit from his experiences and give another door to an avenue that you can take. So hopefully you can find that right husband or the right wife and do things the right way. We'll be right back here on The Dean Show with my next guest. Don't go anywhere. This is The Dean, The Dean This is The Dean Show. 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 This is the Dean's, the Dean Show. This is the Dean's, the Dean Show. This is the Dean's, the Dean Show. Wa alaikum as How's it going, Warahmatullahi brother? How's it everything? How's everything, my brother? <laughs> Very good, alhamdulillah. So I went from saying in the beginning opening, many people, they went from being obsessed with a girlfriend to a boyfriend, they finally learned the Dean. Yes. And they went away from all that. Because that woman, she's not talking about getting test driven. And he's <laughs> right. sick of test driving. Exactly. So what are the benefits of marriage now? Alhamdulillah, marriage, first and, first and foremost, it um, saves us from the fitna of the world. You know, we, unfortunately, we live in a society where haram is just surrounding us 24-7. Isn't it? And it's, it's much easier to commit yourself into haram than to do it the right way, to do it um, with uh, keeping in mind the, the sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, Alhamdulillah, once somebody gets married, you can enjoy the benefits of, you know, the, the gender interactions, but do it in a way that's pleasing to your creator. Now, you said one word, and I can't let you get away with you said Sharia. Yes. Now, some, some people who just, you know, they love bashing Islam, they hear this word, it's a red light. What do you mean when you say Sharia? Sharia, in simple terms, is essentially the, the laws of the creator, the do's and the don'ts. As simple as that. And... Sharia is not something to be uh, scared of because it's something that's just and peaceful to the entire society mm -hmm. for Muslims and non-Muslims alike. Yeah, Moses brought Sharia, yes. Jesus, charity exactly. is Sharia, you know, being good to family is Sharia, praying is Sharia, this is all part of the Sharia, right? Absolutely. Okay, now marriage is part of the institution. That's another part of the Sharia, correct? Correct. And what motiv motivated you so people can also benefit before we go deeper into this to get into marrying, just for your personal experience, just sure. in a condensed version. Right. I mean, I, I basically try to follow what our, uh, our religion teaches, which is to first and foremost go to your parents, to your relatives, to your friends, to the imam of the masjid. Um, and I, I did all of that, um, but unfortunately, you know, first of all, uh, marriage will only happen when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has destined it. So, in a way, I wasn't doing anything wrong. I uh, what I was doing was sort of getting frustrated with some of the tools and the resources that were available. And so initially when I went through all the, the people that I knew and they kept, for whatever reason, bringing the wrong kind of person that I was really not interested in, I eventually went onto the matrimonial websites yeah. to sort of do my own <laughs> dirty work. And uh, again, you know, there's a plethora of matrimonial websites out there and some of them are good, some of them are not so good. Uh, but generally speaking, most of them had certain issues that, that I felt could be improved upon. Mm -hmm. And so, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, after looking for three very long years, I, uh, alhamdulillah, got married to a wonderful sister. And uh, right after we got married, I actually discussed with her and I, and I proposed my idea that I wanted to utilize my professional skills as a programmer and... Um, uh, my background of uh, being a student of knowledge and having connections with the ulama and the shuyukh of the community and also using my experience of going through this journey 
how can I put all these things together to make it easier for those that follow. Now, how can we benefit from your experiences? Now, you, you have a lot of experience because you went through, I mean, can we safely say all, almost all of the, the yes. matrimonial sites <laughs> that are out there? Yes. Right, so you gained a lot of experience. We want to extract right. some of that right. so our viewers can benefit and not make maybe some of the mistakes you might have made. Right. You've learned a lot so we can benefit. What are some of the difficulties and challenges you face? Uh, you know, so like I said, there, there are a lot of websites out there and some of them are good, some of them are not so good. The biggest problem that I felt, in my humble opinion, is that most of the matrimonial websites out there are, are there as a business to make money. They're not really interested in benefiting people to, to connect for the purpose of getting married. And in fact, once people get married, uh, they lose a customer. So it's almost to their benefit to keep you perpetually looking and just Shopping. going through this frustration. Mm -hmm. Um, that's one thing. Second thing is, you know, it's the internet, so there's really very little control of what you can do and what you cannot do. And so um, most of us, you know, those that are trying to uh, be practicing and fearful of God's laws, uh, we want to do it the right way. And most of these websites will not have controls in place to watch you. And basically you can do whatever you want. And so you get into all kinds of fitna, you know, uh, communicating with people in a way or in a manner that's not pleasing to, to God. Um, and then the third sort of problem is uh, because it's an open medium to the whole world, you get all kinds of people with bad intentions. Some of them trying to scam you for money or um, just they're bored, so they want to just fool around with somebody else's emotions. So you get like a whole, you know, suite of people that just add to the frustration of somebody who's sincerely looking to get married for the for the sake of Allah for the for the right reasons what, no, go ahead. so uh, what I would say is my experience has essentially benefited me in creating resources that that have the right controls in place so that we minimize the haram or the fitna and also uh, maximize the chances of success by bringing together a group of people that have a lot of commonality already, that are already looking for the same kind of thing, so that you have a much higher chance of success. What are some of the problems that you've seen also over time now? Thank God you're, you're married now, right? Alhamdulillah. Okay, so now that you have gone through all of these challenges, what are some of the other things that you've seen? Have you seen, like, because we know the deen is complete, this way of life from the Creator is very straightforward. The Prophet, peace be upon him, he said, oh, young people, if you can afford, go ahead and get married, yes. right? And he also instructed the parents, if a good, honest, and righteous person of sound character, his dean is intact, comes to marry your daughter, marry him. Otherwise, there'll be great corruption and fitna in the land, right? Absolutely, So yes. now we have clear instruction here. Mm -hmm. uh, did you see the opposite ha happening from the parents? Yes, unfortunately. I mean, there, there's a whole variety of reasons for why I feel young people today find it difficult to get married. I mean, alhamdulillah, I've been in this, this work serving the community to try to get young people uh, connected for marriage. And I've seen a whole uh, suite of problems. Some problems that are, um, you know, fall on the side of the parents, some on the side of the sisters, and some on the brothers, and some society as a whole. So uh, you touched upon something very important. Uh, a lot of times I have personally seen, while I'm trying to help people get married, is um, the brother and the sister are actually, mashallah, good for each other. They're compatible. Uh, maybe they're a little bit young, but you know, both of them are sincerely looking to please Allah and, and get married for the right reasons. But sometimes it's the parents that actually do more disservice to their children than uh, good. And oftentimes they don't realize it. And for example, if I may cite some examples, sometimes let's say uh, a younger brother who is still potentially a student, but has you know a good potential. He has a bright future, but he doesn't have much money. He's a good practicing Muslim. He's uh, good character and everything. And the sister is interested in such a brother, but then the parents of the girl would shoot him down because he's not a doctor or a lawyer or he's not making enough money. Um, and so, uh, similarly on the other side, uh, sometimes let's say a brother is uh, from India, a particular city in India, and he, he, his parents want him to marry a specific girl from a specific cultural background. And so they lose out opportunities for a good girl who, who may have been very good and compatible for him. So sometimes parents actually do <laughs> cause a lot of harm than, than good. We, I like, we're going to get more into this. We're going to take a break. Sure. We're going to take a break. You take a break. 
get some uh, juice, some Kool-Aid, whatever the case, and we'll be right back. Take a refresher, we'll be right back with more on this hot topic to our marriage from my brother here, Hassan. We'll be right back on the Dean Show. I want you to imagine you wake up and in front of you are a bunch of guys running around kicking a ball. No goals, no lines, no rules. What would you think? But is that your life? Surely every sport has its goal. Every game has its end. It has its objective. It has its rules. How about life? How about our life? Isn't there a goal to life? Isn't there a purpose, an objective that we have to reach? We think so. The Quran tells us that we exist in order to worship God. And worshiping God means knowing God, as the Quran says. Worship though is not some narrow, small thing. It's wide, it's vast, it encompasses everything that the human being does. Everything that you do, everything that you think, everything that you feel can be done, thought, said, felt in a way that is either pleasing or displeasing to God. The purpose of life is to try and do everything in a way that God loves and God is pleased with. That is your goal. Back here on the Dean Show, and we went from, many people went from, like we talked about in the beginning, obsessed with having a boyfriend. Now they realize the purpose of life. Completing half your Dean is in marriage. Now you have this institution of marriage. You protect the lineage of your children, protect yourself from diseases and all the other things. Now the evil outcome that comes with fornication and doing it the wrong way, but doing it the right way, Allah's way, the Creator's way, you got so many blessings, right? Alhamdulillah. And now there's some obstacles. You went through a lot in getting married. You went through all the matrimonial side. One of the benefits from your experience, we, we were talking about the, the parents now. Yes. We know that parents, obviously, they care about their gems, mm -hmm. you know, their children. They don't want anybody uh, coming in who's going to you know, um, be like a wolf coming in in sheep's clothing, so it's obviously encouraged that the parents are involved, but sometimes people overstep the grounds, right? right. You have these high, high um, uh, demands, you know, 50,000, 60,000 on the Maha, right? right? The right. Prophet, peace be upon him, said the simplest marriage, the best marriage are the simplest ones, so now you have right. parents sometimes, okay, the guy comes, he has good character, good dean, and now they want like 100,000. Have you seen some of this happening? Oh, yes, absolutely. I mean, uh it's actually very prevalent in our society mm -hmm. where um, the parents would demand such outrageous mahars that are just not doable for the, yeah. for the guy. And then one of two things happen. Either the guy just says, okay, I will do it just to marry the girl. And he has absolutely no intention of paying the mahar, which is actually very wrong because it's an obligation upon you. Mm -hmm. uh, or sometimes the brother sincerely wants to pay, but he's just unable to. And so therefore he misses out on a good girl and the girl misses out on a good guy. Mm -hmm. Um, another problem that I've seen is that sometimes kids actually do want to uh, give that respect to their parents to say, you know, you are my guardian, you have the right to choose for me. But the parents kind of abuse that, that respect because the parents have a certain image of what their children should marry. And sometimes that image is diagonally opposite of what the child wants. And so the child is constantly giving this respect to their parents of bringing candidates and eventually keeping on saying no because it, the, the candidates that are being brought are not matching what the person actually wants. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of time wasted and a lot of frustrations and, and, and I think the, the only piece of advice I could give to parents and children is first of all children should continue to give that respect to their parents. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given that right to the parents to help you choose your spouse. But these are adults now, they're not even children, right? Right, right, yeah. adults. And uh, at the same time, parents don't go overboard in imposing what, on what you want, uh, but to you know, have that honest conversation with your children and, and really find out what do they like, what are their interests and hobbies, and what, what do they see as a, you know, uh, an ideal spouse for their marriage. Let's go on to some other, let's bring things, we want to bring things down to reality. I mean, we're fallible human beings, we make mistakes, sometimes we need the reminder, and reminder benefits the believers. So now you have also a growing trend of women that now they want to finish school or also men who want to finish school right. and now the women end up you know neglecting the avenue of marriage and they end up getting a degree right. but they end up passing up 
that yes. marriage, it's kind of like the, you missed the boat, and now you're maybe, what, like in the late 20s, 30s, right. and now what happens next? Yeah, this is another very uh, serious problem, actually. A, a lot of women, um, rightfully so, you know, they want to get an education, they want to uh, get a career, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But unfortunately, sometimes they put so much weight on getting a career and education that they naturally get a little bit older. And uh, unfortunately, in our community, sometimes, uh, you know, brothers are looking for a specific age category. Maybe they want to have a lot of kids. And so they want to marry a, a sister who's much younger. But then by the time that sister finishes her education, she's uh, perhaps a little bit past her prime. And so now, all of a sudden, mashallah, she might be a good-looking sister. She might have good education, good family, and everything. But all of a sudden, from the brother's perspective, she's not as much of a high demand anymore. And so unfortunately those sisters now find it much much harder to get married when if they had gotten married a little bit earlier maybe before finishing their education gotten married to a good guy and then studied together even or continued to study after she got married it would have been a, a much better outcome of the situation. So th th this is a reality I mean some, some you think some women might get offended by that? Uh, I, I hope not, because but my trying, intention but, yeah. is not to uh, Our intention hurt is not to hurt feelings, anybody, yeah. but I, I want to... But it's better us to tell them. Absolutely. Because this, this is really a reality, what's, ho what's going on. Exactly. I, I, I would love for people to at least keep it in mind to know what, what the situation is instead of being in denial. Exactly. And wouldn't it be better now, what, what, what's the substitute? Can she continue school, get married, and have a partner who helps facilitate this? Absolutely. Yes, I, I mean... Um, I have seen so many young brothers and sisters who, who come to their parents and say, you know, we want to save ourselves from haram and uh, we would like to get married early, just as you said, the Prophet ﷺ encouraged people to get married early so that they protect themselves from all the evils of society. Mm -hmm. And so when a brother and sister who may both be students get married, there's absolutely nothing wrong in them continuing to study. In fact, it's beautiful. They encourage each other and inshallah, many of them become very successful in their careers and their professions because they, you know, motivated each other. Yes, so absolutely. And, and, and there's no such thing like people are so, so, so scared of divorce now, but then the, the door opens up and they, en they end up, they feel like they end up doing the promiscuous thing. They end up maybe dating, right? right. They say, okay, you know, now they go towards the haram. Mm -hmm. and they end up dating, it's better, isn't it better now to divorce? Obviously this is discouraged in Islam, you want to really keep the family unit and do everything you can not to separate, but at the end it's not death to us part, right? That's Absolutely not. not. That's I not mean, Islamic thing, there's a mercy there, and if they do split, it's better to actually divorce a hundred times, this is just one extreme example, than to do one time zina, is that right? Absolutely, I mean, divorce is something that's frowned upon by certain cultures, uh, and looked upon as if it's a forbidden thing, but it's not, it's, it's actually completely uh, allowed and sometimes it's not only just allowed it's actually recommended because if two people are so uh, incorrect for each other and they're just harming each other they're hurting each other's feelings on a non you know daily basis there's no mercy there's no love in that relationship yes our, our deen teaches us to give it your best you know try every uh, stone unturned and and uh, you know utilize every means you have to reconcile but even the best of the uh, companions of the Prophet Wasallam so divorced. So. And sometimes it's actually necessary and, and it, it will inshallah in most cases make the, the brother and sister's life better because maybe they would uh, you know, later connect with somebody who is better for them inshallah. Mm -hmm. And actually very honestly that is the case with me. I, I subhanAllah for uh, reasons, you know, I had to take a divorce after five years of marriage and Alhamdulillah I'm very happily married now and inshallah the sister that, uh, you know, my ex um, is happily married and, you know, it's, it's a beautiful thing whereas if we forced ourselves to stay married it may have been a much worse outcome so mm -hmm. uh, Alhamdulillah uh, our deen is very merciful it, it creates avenues for alternatives that don't force you to be in an unhappy, miserable situation. When we come back, we're going to take a break. We're going to talk about, you know, the men shopping a lot. Right. Okay, this is another problem. They keep shopping, shopping, like window shopping. Yes. And then you have uh, procrastination, cold feet. A lot of brothers, in, they're not man enough to step up and take care of the responsibilities. Is this right. true? Absolutely. So we're going to talk about all this and more here on The Dean Show. Don't go anywhere. You might see me talking. But is it even this is my family. family. If I ain't got fear.
He started having his problems, gang activity, fights. One night, policemen called me, saying, you, Eddie's uh, father, come on, get him from the station. He, he's locked up. One fight here, another fight there. His physical being was great for his ego, but it left him empty. I'm running here, running there. On the outside, people looking in said, hey, this is a man. Everybody knew Eddie that at any given moment he could have seven to eight women that are running around the club looking for him. He did things that he, uh, he pushed himself to the ethical extremes that he could. I have to get out of this totally. Right near the end, there was, there was just a void. It was a constant struggle. His inner soul was broken at that moment. There was that emptiness in his eyes. It was a bigger emptiness than I think I've ever really seen in his eyes. It was Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, and he was struggling with that, but the effort was there. There was a conscious effort to make that switch. He basically started talking behind his back, look at him, he's starting to be a good guy. And this was the reality, it was death. Betty's concept was he, he wanted to start showing Islam and spread it to the non-Muslim. Well, people didn't know who I was. Like, well, why are we doing this? No one's going to take you serious. You're living a dream. And people, I had to be out there and trying to convince people to be on the show. That, that first episode of that uh, show aired, I think that's when you saw the full formation come into to hope. This guy's changed. What's going on here? He's, he's a machine, you know. But to see someone change, to see their character changes, to see positive changes in their life, it's a sign uh, of God. Back here on the D show, and before we left, we talked about there's no death until death to us part in Islam. One of the mercies is that now that if it's better to actually, and this was just going to the extreme, divorce a hundred or a thousand times and do it, come in peace, leave in peace, rather than committing one act of zina, right. fornication, adultery. Is Absolutely. that correct? Yes. So we're on, we, 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 we concur with that. Yeah. And we talk about window shopping. What do we mean? <laughs> so one of the problems I have seen with uh, especially younger brothers uh, who, are, uh, who are potentially looking to get married, but they're in, in their own minds, they're probably not as serious as they should be. And what I mean by that is sometimes um, brothers will come across, you know, sisters who are looking to get married and they'll get to know them a little bit and they like certain things about the sister, but not everything is perfect, which nobody is perfect. And so they, you know, kind of let that sister go and then they meet another sister and they keep doing this over and over and over again to the point where they have this very unrealistic image of the kind of girl they want to marry, which consists of all the good qualities that they've seen across the, you know, 50 girls that they met. And now, in their mind, they have an image that is just not practical. And, and also, at the same time, they might actually bump into a sister who is good in most of the aspects, but they feel that little bit of fear, what if I say yes to this sister and then tomorrow a better sister comes along? Mm -hmm. When in reality, you know, the, uh, and what my teachers have taught me is that, subhanAllah, the only way the right person will come along is when you make sincere dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you say, Ya Allah, I don't know what is good for me. Only you know what's best for me. So you bring the right person to me that will be beneficial for me in the dunya and in the hereafter. Mm -hmm. And, and that's, that's the right way of doing it. The other thing is, um, you know, young brothers who maybe just finished their education, they have a good job, they have a nice car, they have that lifestyle of independent, you know, they can stay up till three in the morning and watch movies with their friends. Uh, and of course, once you get married, you, you have to be more responsible. You have to give time to your spouse. You can't just accept invitations whenever you feel like it. You know, there, there's certain, uh, I wouldn't call it difficulties, but certain uh, adjustments you have to make as a married person. And uh, brothers sometimes who are ready to get married for all practical purposes, shy away from getting married because they don't want to lose that independence. But in the process, they end up doing a lot of haram, which, like we mentioned, you know, is much, much worse than doing it the right way. Yes. So my advice, humble advice to brothers, younger brothers who 
have a job, who have the right means to get married, as our Prophet ﷺ said, get married early, save yourself from haram, and you know, stop window shopping, but make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send the right person to you. A woman is married, the Prophet peace be upon him said a person married for four things, her lineage, yes. what, what, what else are the other four? Lineage, her piety, piety her lineage, lineage, her wealth, and her, her wealth. beauty. Yes, marry the one for her deen, you will be successful, right? Inshallah, so yes. deen is number one, akhlaq, character, good character, and obviously there has to be some kind of attraction between the two, right? Absolutely, yes. But now you keep looking for a number, you know, you went beyond 10, you want 11, right? Right. For men and women, you just, you've been a little bit too picky, right? Ex exactly. Yeah, yes. so now, uh, this is one thing, another thing is, you got these, a real experience, brother just uh, was talking to a sister on one of these matrimonial sites, and they were talking for some time, and then finally, it was getting down to the nitty and gritty, and she had all these demands on him, right? right. And he was talking about, you know, you want to pick out the engagement rings, they're talking about the wedding, you know, big Bollywood, Hollywood style weddings. Right. Do you see this as a problem too? Yes. Um, again, you know, some, some sisters, well, most sisters have this, this dream image of what their wedding should be like. It's the one event that will only happen once in their lifetime, and, you know, from an early age, they plan it out. And, uh, you know, the Prophet ﷺ, his advice was that the, the best marriage and the, the marriage with the most amount of blessings is the one that's very simple. Simple, yeah. And so the, and, and one of my teachers says it beautifully, he says, you know, the husband and wife who are looking to get married, sometimes they spend so much time and effort trying to make the wedding perfect, re not realizing that they themselves are not perfect, and not realizing that they're harming their perfect marriage in trying to create the perfect wedding. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, th this, is, this happens a lot where the sister sometimes also is doing it out of peer pressure. Maybe her friends or her cousins had this amazing wedding and now she wants to outdo that wedding. Yeah. And so in trying to plan this special wedding that's a lavish wedding, um, she, she's causing undue pressure on the poor brother who, who might be sincerely trying to make it all happen. But at the same time, uh, she, she might actually lose him. You know where where he just gives up and he says I can't I can't do this this yeah. is beyond my means, so and, and oftentimes what's worse even is that they start the foundation of their marriage on debt. Now they spent fifty thousand dollars there in the hole exactly yeah. where they could have started a beautiful beginning by humble means. So, yeah. you know again my sis, my advice to brothers and sisters is you know do do what's reasonable but don't go above your means where you cause more harm to your marriage than good. Keep it as the last final message said, keep it simple. We don't need to get into debt right. right before we even start. And then at the same time, you see a lot of weddings where you see one family trying to outdo the other family. Right. And then it's a shame you got in a lot of these families, you have, you know, the, the dancing, you have the, yeah. the, the, you know, the rock bands, uh, right, hip hop right. bands, whatever the case, alcohol and all these other things far away from the This is what advice do you have for this? Now, this is Again, one. you know, I, uh, a lot of times people, the, the brother and sister getting married, they want themselves to do this sort of activity. I mean, inshallah, Allah give us guidance. Uh, but sometimes brothers and sisters fall into family pressure. Yes. Because their family wants to do the it. family. And, and the thing is, you know, uh, uh, my advice again is to be firm and steadfast and really with polite, beautiful words explain to your family that I want barakah and blessings in my marriage for the next 50 years of my life, not just to please you for that one night and destroy my marriage. Yeah. And so, you know, uh, just with polite, beautiful words approach your family and say, this is something that's not allowed or not uh, encouraged in our religion and I want for myself and for my husband or vice versa, to have blessings in my marriage. And yeah. so I would rather keep it simple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Start off right, right, you end right. Right. Exactly. You got half-naked wedding, you know, you right. got doing it the wrong way. It's going to end up uh, taking the wrong course. And it's going to be uh, something that you are going to have to deal with and suffer the consequences. And it's going to be erect from the barakah. Exactly. So we want barakah. And hopefully we got... Uh, so many people excited about marriage now. Inshallah. We've seen some Inshallah. of the realities that are going out there. People can relate with it. So we right. bring it back to the real world. So give us an avenue now that people can go. You're going to start this new website. Talk about it. Yes. So the website that I'm just about to launch, actually just launched today, it's called mawaddamatrimony.com. And one of the unique things about it is that it's going to be the first website that's supervised by a board of ulama, by a board of scholars who will you know, scrutinize it to make sure everything is halal, everything is legit, 
and clean. There's no chances of uh, inappropriate activity. And also the, the biggest source of advertisement for the website will be ulama and scholars so that the kind of members we will get will be high quality, good practicing Muslims who are looking for the same. And so, inshallah, that way we minimize the frustration of people coming from a wide variety of backgrounds who don't really match with each, each, each other. And uh, you end up wasting a lot of time because you really are not looking for the same thing. And, uh, you know, I, in, in contrast with that, I, I would also, you know, bring some of the experiences that I've had and some of the expertise as a, as a programmer and uh, somebody who's actually, my expertise is in security and privacy. And so I will, inshallah, um, do my best to make sure that people have a very safe and secure and wonderful experience in looking for their uh, potential spouse while doing it in a way that's pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. MashaAllah, Alhamdulillah, thank you very much. May the Creator of the Heavens Earth reward you Ameen. for your endeavor. Same to you. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Ameen. Thank you. Take care. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam. Peace be with you. And we covered a lot of ground in a short amount of time, and hopefully we stimulated you to run towards marriage. We talked about women making those high demands, put a lot of pressure on the brother. Brothers just window shopping, having cold feet step up. You know, it wasn't hard for you to go try to get a girlfriend. You were motivated about that, and you asked, made all sorts of phone calls. You had a black book. Now you threw it away. Now be man enough to step up and go talk to the wali, go talk to the woman that you need to marry through the proper channels. The woman now, Khadija, look, she wanted to marry the Prophet saw something. She stepped up also. It's not just a one-way street. If you see a brother now, then maybe you want to marry. Go ahead through the right channels, make a connection there. But the thing is, like we said, we fight to keep the family together when it is finally an institution of marriage and we don't want it to break. But the point we were making is better now that you run towards marriage and you might mess up along the way, but you messed up in a halal way. You didn't do it in the wrong way, through zina, through fornication, through adultery. So let's do things the way they'll bring barakah into our lives, simplicity. We have these extravagant style weddings that we talked about. Keep it simple. The Prophet peace be upon him said that the best of marriages are the simple ones. And how do you know someone loves you, is right for you? That person brings you closer to Allah. That person brings you closer to your maker. So hopefully if you've gotten the benefit from being with us here on the Dean Show and continue to tune in every week. Follow us on the Facebook, the Twitter, and contribute towards the Dean Show. And we'll see you next time. Until then, peace be with you.